Welcome to the Cloud Careers YouTube channel. In this session, I'm going to explain you the importance of Linux. And if you want to become a cloud engineer or a DevOps engineer, what you need to know first, and what is the first thing that you need to start with when you want to become a cloud and DevOps engineer is something I would like to start. Also, as a part of it, I'm going to release a series of videos which helps you in understanding the basics that are needed to become a cloud engineer or a DevOps engineer. If you want to become a cloud engineer or a DevOps engineer, the very first thing that you need to understand or need to know is Linux. So Linux is nothing but a, an operating system just like your Windows, but it works on a command line. What is a command line? A command line is nothing but whatever you want to do on the top of your computer, you do it as a command. For example, in Windows, if you want to create a file or if you want to delete a file or you want to install a software everything you do it on the matter of a mouse clicks right unlike that in command line everything you do it as a command so so before diving into deep so let's try to understand first so if you want to learn something you need to know why you need to learn first so very first thing 99.9 .9 percent of the world's enterprise infrastructure is on linux that means if you take 1000 servers 999 servers are on the top of linux so it's a must you need to know the linux and if you want to start your cloud journey or a devops journey try to ensure that you are very much familiar with cloud for example you learned the devops tools or you learned some cloud like amazon cloud or google cloud you attended any interview the very first five to 10 minutes of the interview is something which decides the selection or rejection criteria. In any interviews, the first five to 10 minutes, they try to focus more on how comfortable or how confident you are on the basics. If you don't know Linux, and if you attempt any cloud and DevOps interview, in the first five to 10 minutes of your interview itself, you'll come to know that this guy is cooking up the story. So just in order to avoid that, try to ensure you know Linux first. So as a part of that, I'm going to release a lot of videos which ensures that you are very much comfortable with the Linux and all the commands that are highly used as a cloud and DevOps engineer. So please ensure you like the video and subscribe to our channel. Okay, so what is an operating system? An operating system is nothing but a software which you are installing on your computer to get your task done, right? So in that context, there are two types of operating systems. So there are two types of operating system. One type of operating system is referred as graphical user interface. It is also referred as GUI. GUI stands for graphical user interface. And the classic example of it is Windows, which you guys are well aware of it. And the second level of operating system, which you are talking about is CLI. CLI stands for command line operating system. And the Linux falls under the category of Linux. It's a command line operating system. So again, in Linux, there are hundreds and hundreds of varieties of Linux, but we'll talk about that in <clears throat> the upcoming session. But I want you to give you a very clear understanding that in Linux, you do everything as a command. So when your operating system is running as a command line, Okay, the resource utilization and the security of it, everything will be very much optimized and enhanced. That's the reason 99.9% .9 of the enterprise infrastructure is on the top of Linux. Also, when compared to uh, the licensing with the graphical user interface, command line interface licensing is, is completely less, you can say. And moreover, Linux is something which is introduced by a person called as Linux Torvalds. So let's try to understand how the existence of Linux comes up. So earlier, the, the concept of command line operating system is not new. Even from 1970s and 80s, we have this. Earlier, Microsoft used to release a software called as MS-DOS, which, which is also a kind of command line operating system. But I'm not interested in talking about it, but I'm interested in talking about the command line operating system, which inspired Linux, okay? So back in 1980s and all, so there used to be a command line operating system and the name of the command line operating system is Unix. Okay, so unlike our latest operating systems like our Linux or like our Windows, Unix goes in a different format. Okay, for example, if you want to use a Unix operating system, you need to buy the appropriate hardware. Okay, that means the same provider of the software used to supply the hardware as well. So you need to use Unix hardware along with the Unix operating system. No matter, Unix is a very, very, very efficient and very reliable operating system because the same provider is supplying you both the software and the hardware. And that's the reason if you take an iPhone, iPhone gives you just one GB or two GB of memory, but still it never hung, right? That's, that's one of the reason why uh, iOS and uh, the hardware provider, both of them are from the same provider, so they will have a very tight integration. So it was, it was all started in 1980s. 
Okay, so in 1980s, the Unix, which is a command line operating system, was very famous. But at the same time, it's a very costly solution. Only the enterprise companies and the universities that time can afford. So there is a person called as Linus Torvalds who saw who who saw this trend, and who felt that this is very very costly, and he want to he want to contribute. He want to start a project that should exactly look that should look like unix where everything should be uh, inspired i mean he is an insp he is inspired from unix he want to create an operating system that is that should be 100% free and that should have the capability to run in any hardware for example an operating system which is capable of running on hp computer or it can be capable of running on sony computer it should also be capable of running on lenovo computer so linux towers in 1990s Okay, he's an engineer, he's still alive, and uh, Linus Torvalds intended to start an open source project. And he and he named that project as Linux. This is this project is still there. Linux. And he requested all, and he he made an initiative called as let's try to start a project that is open source, which should be with an intention of he want to create an operating system. Okay, an open source operating system. Okay, and it should be free, free to use on any hardware. Okay. Okay. Sometimes yes and sometimes no. Okay, so it depends why I say that. Uh, I'll explain it in a few minutes. It should be an open source, okay? And it should have the capability to run on any hardware. And whoever wants to contribute, they can contribute. With that context in mind, they started developing a new project called as Linux. And everyone, the developers across the world started contributing to the project. So down the line, they were in a position to create a complete operating system that has the capability to run on any hardware. Okay, so this is a quick background about it. From 1990s to till date, till 2022, there are 200, 300 plus varieties of Linuxes. Let's try to understand it, why these many varieties or these many flavors of Linuxes are available. Before that, this is a very interesting term that I want to talk about it. If someone says a software is open source, what exactly it meant? That also we need to know because this is very important. A lot of people will think if a software or if a project is open source, that is 100% free. That may or may not be true all the time. If a software is open source, what exactly it meant is the code of the software should be open. This is the first thing. Code of that software should be open. When I say it should be open, for example, Windows. Windows is an operating system. It's not an open source. That means you cannot see what is there inside the Windows code. You cannot see that, okay? So when someone says that the so op, uh, a software is open source, the code of it is open. That means anyone can take the code. They can start customizing it as per the requirement. And it might not be free all the time. All the time it may or may not be free okay depends on for example an open source software majority of the times it is free to use at uh, home school or personal use but some of the open source software charge you when you're using it at enterprise okay it may or may not be free all the time and third important thing is you should you can customize the code and rebrand it as per your choice but again, you need to keep it as open source. Still, you need to keep that code as open. Okay. These are the three fundamental principles that if you want to consider a software as open source. Okay. Since Linux is a, a command line operating system, which is started with an initiative of open source, there are hundreds and thousands, hundreds of varieties of officially recognized Linux versions. For example, if you take uh, red <clears throat> linux operating system or os usage wiki okay usage of the operating systems i just want to prove my statement that 90 plus 99 percent of the operating system usage is linux let me try to show you that 
somewhere how it should have that image available. Yes. If you click on this, for example, it uh, the game all started in 1990s. In 1990s, a so majority of the share is Unix. As I said, Unix is a very popular choice. If you see this from 1995, 1997, if you see this, the slowly the trend has started. If you see this green, so this graph is there till 2022. And if you see the 2022, almost everything, this is that corporate level at enterprise level. So which is a proof that 99.9% .9 of the enterprise infrastructure is Linux. With that popularity in mind, almost most all the applications in space of cloud or DevOps, everything will be designed keeping the majority of the users in mind. Since majority of the users are Linux users, majority of the softwares that are created would be Linux based. And that's the reason it's very, very, very important to know Linux. Without Linux, it's practically impossible to start your cloud or journey. All right. So second important thing I would like to show you is the Linux flavors. If you say this list of Linux distributions, <clears throat> click on this diagram. If you see this, these many varieties from 1992 till date, how many flavors of operating systems? Okay, flavor is nothing but you can consider it as a brand. Okay, so in Linux, there are majorly two varieties of Linux. Okay, in Linux, there are 300 plus flavors. Flavor is also called as distribution, which is nothing but a brand, okay? It's like Hero Honda bike, Yamaha bike, a Bajaj bike like that, okay? 300 plus flavors of officially recognized Linux flavors, okay? And out of that, it all comes from, either it can be from, okay, Red Hat, okay, Red Hat is a company, and either it can be from Debian, Okay, so you take any Linux, it will be either from Red Hat or from the Debian. So you can coming back to the diagram, and if you see this here, okay, so for example, if you scroll down, if you say Debian, okay, this is the root of it. Again, if you scroll down, you can see something called as Red Hat. Okay, Red Hat, they, they started this project, okay, and someone has, for example, if you see here, Red Hat Enterprise Linux has cloned it, and they branded it. Again, if you see this, okay, Oracle Enterprise Linux have cloned the Red Hat Enterprise Linux and they rebranded it as Oracle Enterprise Linux. And again, someone has taken the code from Oracle Enterprise and they released it as Oracle Linux. Like that, if you count, there are 300 plus varieties of Linuxes that are available officially. So if you want to become a cloud engineer or a DevOps engineer, do you need to learn all of it? Definitely not. Okay, if you know one, rest of them almost remains the same. So among all the very popular choice is Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So Red Hat Enterprise Linux is a very popular choice in almost all the companies, 95 plus percent of the companies, okay, they use as Red Hat because Red Hat is very famous uh, Linux because of the support models and the type of support that they offer. If a product has to be successful, uh, it all starts with the customer experience and the support that they offer to the product. In that space, Red Hat is known for it. So if you know Red Hat, you're good, okay? You, either you can use Red Hat Linux or CentOS. Both of them are, okay, almost look like the same. CentOS and Red Hat are, uh, you can consider CentOS as a clone of Red Hat operating system. So you can, you can use this as a part of your learning. So <clears throat> next thing. So how can we learn? How can I learn the Linux? The very first thing. So what are all the options that are available to learn Linux? Let's try to understand it. How can I or you learn Linux? There are multiple ways. Again, in the space of internet, everything is free. So for example, if you want to learn Linux, one of the option is you can, you can install, uh, if you are a Windows user, you can install Oracle VirtualBox on your computer, on your Windows computer and can create a Linux VM. And second thing you can have, if you are using a Linux laptop, you can practice there. Or if you are using, or if, if you are using MacBook, you can also practice on MacBook, but MacBook is again, it comes under the category of Unix. That's not a wide choice. Or there are some open platforms like Katakoda where you can learn on the click of your browser. Or the other way is create a server on AWS cloud and create a server on AWS cloud. 
So among all the options, creating a server on AWS cloud and uh, I mean, creating a server on AWS cloud is a great approach. So because you'll get an opportunity to learn cloud as well. Okay, this is a this is recommended. So among all three options, the fourth option has almost all the use cases and you feel like that you're already working on cloud. This gives you a great feel. So in the upcoming sessions, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a server on the top of AWS cloud, and then we are going to learn Linux on the top of it, okay? So I'm going to release a series of videos which are which where I'm going to deliver the free Linux sessions. So if you learn whatever I'm going to release in the next five to 10 videos, you can start your cloud and Linux journey. Okay, if you like the content, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I would like to add one more point before I leave an end note. If you want to learn Linux, you need to remember three points. <clears throat> so if you want to start your Linux journey, this is, remember these three points when you are, okay? If you want to learn Linux, if you want to learn Linux, remember these points, remember these golden points. In Linux, everything is, okay. You do everything using commands. And there are hundreds and thousands of commands. You don't have to learn anything. As an engineer, if you know 20 to 25 commands, that's more than enough, okay. And second thing, in Linux, everything is a file, okay. So you need to start thinking like, when you're working on Linux, when you landed into an issue, all you need to understand is, oh, in Linux, everything is a file. That means if something doesn't work, you need to think that there is a file that I need to look. Okay, for example, you want to change some property inside the system. You should think like, oh, there should be a file where I need to change the property within the file. Okay, if this is one thing you need to remember. And third thing in Linux, there is no concept of recycle bin. So if you delete something, it's gone forever. So you need to think twice, thrice before you delete something. And fourth important thing, this is very important, Linux is case sensitive. What exactly it meant? Okay, for example, there is a, a file called as the cloud carriers. Okay, it is a file. So in Windows, this and this, both of them are same, right? Technically, there is no difference between this, right? But in Linux, it's not like that. So if it is Windows, both of them are same file. If it is Linux, the cloud carriers.txt and the cloud carriers.txt are different because it is case sensitive, okay? THC with a T capital letter and THC with a T, T lowercase letter, both of them are different letters. For example, if you are trying to sign in using SSH username as CentOS <clears throat> at the rate IP address, Okay, it will work. For example, instead, if you use SSH CentOS at the rate IP address, it will not work. Okay, that's because Linux is case sensitive. Okay, these are the very important points you need to remember before you start your cloud journey or before you start, before you intend to learn Linux. Okay, so I'm gonna release one more video tomorrow. Please stay tuned to the channel. So where I'm, I'm gonna update a lot of content that is related to Linux so that it helps you to start your cloud and DevOps journey. Every day I'm going to update a, a new video on Linux. So please stay tuned to the channel and please hit a like button if you like the content and ensure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you, signing off. I'll see you tomorrow in the session. Bye.